Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I decided to come out here, sit and think. This is going to be made, this video, more as a vlog podcast type video. So you don't have to see anything. There's nothing to see. You can just listen to it if you're driving in the car or if you're working, you can drop your phone in your pocket with your headphones and you're not going to miss anything. I'm going to talk about today spring. Spring is coming and growing. Now, if you see any part of this footage and look at it and say, hey, it's upside down, which it might be once in a while. That's because I'll explain it on the end that I figured out in what direction the wind blows is the direction on the opposite side my camera has to be when I'm not might. And I am not might. I'm simply sitting out by a bathtub in my garden. And the only thing you're going to hear are birds in the trees. I hear a chainsaw in the distance and planes periodically flying overhead. My mind has been going crazy for the past few days. The things I have come up with are unbelievable. I think they even shocked Gary. So be sure to stay tuned this spring, but I think I'm going to start a lot of my projects early, even though a lot of you won't be gardening because you can get prepared and ready. Today, as I sit out here, the only thing I want to talk about really is soil. Making your own soil. And that's what I do. And I think it's important to make your own soil. Though I am not against buying soil. I want you to buy soil if you need to buy soil. If you've got a small yard, if you've got a little patio and you don't have soil, buy soil. Buy whatever soil you can afford. If you can afford really good soil, go ahead and buy really good soil. If you want to go with the cheaper soil, make sure there's nothing bad in it. Look at it. And some of the cheaper soils are perfectly fine to get you started too. But let me tell you something. Once you start anything, the smallest garden, I don't care if it's in little flower pots, you're going to start creating your own soil as Mother Nature does. Every single leaf on the plant, every single leaf, is your future soil. Compost, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it dirt. The leaf falls off the plant, and then what happens? It could be greenish brown, it could be yellow, and then it sits there, it dries up. If it's damp, it won't completely dry, but it will eventually break down. It'll get leathery and then just break apart. That's your soil. Look around when you're outside, look around at plants, look around at nature, look at places that are growing on hillsides that nobody at all is maintaining. Nobody. How are those plants growing? Be it a mountainside with trees or be it the desert, they're all creating their own soil. If you hear anything now, the sun is coming out and my water fountains are starting to turn on on my bathtub. And at the end of this video, I'll explain in detail why I had to turn my camera upside down. It's actually my cell phone. If you have any yard, or if you know people with the yard and you have the ability to get their leaves that are falling off their trees or grass clippings that they do not treat their grass for weeds, collect as much as you can and put it aside. Kitchen scraps. We here in California can no longer throw kitchen scraps, food matter, out in the garbage where it is going to the dump to be put out with plastic, metal, and all that. It now has to go into the container in which your yard waste goes because they have figured out, took them long enough, it, they have figured out that that breaks down and they can make compost out of it. Be it they give it away or sell it, they can make compost out of it. It doesn't have to go to landfill. We're not growing vegetables or plants out there. So why put it in landfill? People can use it. So now we can't throw it away. We, I have not thrown mine away in so many years. We keep all ours and we create our own soil. That's the best soil. Now, don't worry, you got it from the grocery store. Maybe it's not organic, you know, the food you bought. Don't worry about it. Nature will take care of that for you. When it breaks down, it breaks down. It is wonderful. 
So you keep that. Shredded paper. You get bills in the mail and you got your address on it. You're shredding it. I don't personally use shiny paper, even though I have done research and found out it's fine. The shiny paper is made here in California with non-lead ink. And it would be actually almost edible. If you want to compost that, go ahead. That I put out in the trash. And they want me to put it in the recycle bin to not go to landfill. Fine, they can have that. But any paper that's not shiny, that you can use to compost. Now, when you are building your soil, let's get back to that. You don't want to just fill an entire tote with just shredded paper. Because what you're going to end up with is paper mache. You'll end up with a tote that's not going to drain. Because you have created, with water and paper, paper mache. You want to mix things up. So you want to put leaves in there and branches and toilet paper rolls and shredded paper. And you want it mixed up. Think of it as a stir fry. But once you get it in there, you're not turning it. We do not turn. I do not turn. Mother Nature does not turn unless a bad windstorm or flood comes. So I don't turn. There's no reason to turn. You know who's turning it? Your microbes that get in there. They're moving it around. Your earthworms are moving it around. And as it breaks down, it's moving around. Don't worry about turning it. I'm too old to turn. And even if I wasn't that old, I wouldn't be turning anyways. Just layer. Think of it as layering. What do I like on the bottom of my totes? I've talked about that so many times. I grow in totes. You can grow in buckets. You can grow in flower pots. You can grow in a hole in the ground. Whatever works for you. Raise beds. But on the bottom, if you're going to make your own soil, I load that up with branches. Branches that I can find all over the yard. Big branches, little branches, and cheese. If your raised bed is big enough, you could throw logs in there. That goes on the bottom. That will keep your drain holes open. If you load the bottom up with native soil, if you load it up with shredded paper, again, your shredded paper will turn into what's paper mache, like a clay, and it will block your holes. But when you have branches, you save on soil that you're going to buy. And just think about it. Those branches that Mother Nature created, that nature itself created, that's going to make more soil for you. So you can always go back a year or two from now and take that container apart, raise bed or whatever, and you've got great soil all the way to the bottom. So start making your soil now. Don't throw away anything that you can use if you're going to plant. I don't even care if you're going to plant flowers, you can use it. The thing is, if you throw that away, you're throwing away money. Because soil to buy is expensive. So if you want to buy soil, put it on the top. Make sure the bottom part of your raised bed or containers are free. Things that you can find. Somebody's raking your yard. They're filling up their trash cans. Ask if you can have it. If they're going to throw it out and they don't have room in their trash cans because there's so many leaves, tell them to dump it over at your house. But even small amounts, small amounts, if you're going to grow in little flower pots, every little bit helps. Now, if you're still under snow and it's cold, save it in trash cans, save it in totes. It is much better to have holes so when water gets in there, it will drain and you can keep your microbes alive because microbes are not fish and they don't want to be underwater. They want to be damp. Water is life, but they don't want to be underwater. So you want something that drains. But if it's not draining, something happens, it floods, drain the water out and don't throw it away. You didn't turn it in the garbage. It will still, once it's dried out, it will still break down again and turn into wonderful soil. So the main thing right now is start collecting to make your own soil. Your plant matter that you are collecting right now is going to create such good compost, such good soil that when you go to plant, your plants are going to go wild. You don't get that when you buy bagged soil. The bagged soil that you buy is already broke down, supposedly. It's already broke down. Read the bag. Forest matter, a lot of them say. I don't know. Is that bark? forest matter. Some of them only say forest matter. Some of them go into more detail. The point is, it's already broke down. What happens out in nature? Walk around, look around. Seeds fall off of plants. And what are they growing in? 
they're growing in topsoil. They're growing in the soil that's towards the top where the leaves are still breaking down. They're actually growing where it hasn't broken down yet. Now you may say that's crazy. It doesn't work. It does work. Now every plant is different, so it's not going to be the same for every single plant. There are some seeds that fall on the ground that don't grow for 10 years. But most of your vegetables, they're growing in the matter in which it has not completely broke down to dust. It actually looks like it's rotting. If a squash is left on the ground and it rots and it's the right time of the year, it's going to grow in that rotting flesh that's left, whatever's left. Same thing with a lot of your vegetable plants especially. Now, how do I know that? Because when I first started gardening, seriously, I was trying to make sure everything was composted down and what was growing, what was growing was my kitchen scraps. My compost was growing. The stuff I didn't want to grow. I'm throwing out potato peels and, and leaves off of parts of, let's say, greens that I'm not going to eat. It wasn't, it wasn't perfect or whatever. I tossed that in there. And I was throwing out tomatoes and the seeds would get in there. And what was growing? Potatoes were growing. Squash was growing because I had squash seeds get in there. Pumpkins were growing. I had tomatoes and peppers and everything was growing. Papayas. Oh my goodness, you can't stop the papayas. Go eat a papaya, throw it in all that food matter. And that food matter is sitting there. And what's happening? You got more plants growing than you even want. Now you're running around trying to get rid of them. Or you just push it back in and kill the little plants and turn them into compost. The point is, the seeds are growing in the matter that is breaking down, not broke down. That is what I'm trying to say. That's what I found out. That's what I saw with my own eyes, in my own yard, in my own garden. Be it in the ground or be it in totes. Now, I like totes. I have to grow in my garden in a container for multiple, multiple reasons. I have some stuff growing in the ground. Oh, I've got all kinds of brassicas growing in the ground. I've got all kinds of things growing in the ground and flowers growing in the ground. But we do periodically have gophers. Gophers have taken out my persimmon trees in the past. They've taken out fig trees. They've taken out all kinds of vegetable plants. They are just happy little creatures that go underground. You don't see them. They pop up. Mm, what's the best part is the, you know, is the roots. You go there, your plant looks dead. You go to touch it, it falls over, there's no roots. So we have gophers. You can control them to a point, and if you want to, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. So gophers is one issue. The other issue is squirrels. Periodically, especially in the spring when the baby squirrels are coming out all over, and, and other rodents too, they wanna to get in there. Well, I can use tool in a tote. I can put four stakes, I can wrap it with tool, and I have found that rabbits, squirrels, rats, and mice do not like tool. They can't get hurt in the tool, but the tool, which is a fine netting used for clothing, and it's so cheap. I get mine on eBay, $10 a bolt. It's 40 yards by 54 inches wide, and let me tell you something. I have overbought. I've got so many bolts because you can use that stuff over and over. Once you've used it, you can take it off and move it and use it again. Well, I have found by using that, it works for me. There's always gonna be something, you know, there's always someone that figures out that it's not that bad, but they can't get stuck in it. What they do is they go up to it, they touch it. Now these critters have very tiny, sharp nails. Think of it like little pins, little needles. When they touch it, what happens to their little tiny nails? I saw a rabbit touch it once. He touched it and he leaped back 10 feet. He thought he got into a trap. He was so scared. They can't get caught in it but it feels like they can get caught in it. So generally, they will move on their way. Now, let me warn you on something. If you have a real big critter problem, you're gonna need some sacrificial plants around. Because if they are starving and they can't find anything, then what they will do is they will try to figure out if they can get into your plants. So leave a couple plants growing on the ground or in a container but tool the important plants. And I think you're gonna be really, really happy. I've got a lot of videos on that and you can go back and watch that when you're ready. 
The other thing is trees. We have a lot of trees. We have pine trees. We have pepper trees. We've got all kinds of trees. And I will tell you, the pepper trees and the pine trees are the worst. They send roots along the surface of the ground and they are looking for water. And they will rob water, nutrients, or anything, anything they can possibly find to suck that water up. And you know what they do when they find a flower pot or if they find a tote? They will go up to the bottom. If your container has holes on the bottom, they will put their roots, which are very close to the surface, but you don't see them because they have to stay underground. They will come up and go into the flower pots. They will swell up. Now, this could be raised beds too if your raised bed does not have a solid bottom, all right? So even if it's got drain holes, this will happen to raised beds. And a lot of people don't know what happened to their plants. But going back to that, they'll put their roots through the holes on the bottom, and then they make their roots larger. So if it was the size of, let's say, your pinky, by the time they're through with their roots, they're going to make it the size of your thumb or bigger. They will block the holes in your container, literally block the hole so it doesn't drain anymore. And then they will suck up all the water they want until your plants are dead. And then you go over there and it's like, what happened? I've had that happen on the wall where I grow all my totes. Everything was beautiful and all of a sudden my squash died, something died. It's like, what happened? And when I start to go in there to see or go to compost, I find the tree roots. Usually those are pepper tree roots. They've sent their roots up, they've blocked the holes, and then they just sit there and, like a straw, just suck up what they want. So for me, what works here for me, and it's always different areas. You've got microclimates. Some places you can grow straight in the ground, some places you can't, or I should say me. For those, I have put my holes on my containers up. When I say up, it's not on the bottom. If I put them on the bottom... They will go in there and they will suck up all the water and nutrients. All that wonderful compost you made, oh, they'll, they'll just be so happy. They'll be sucking all that stuff up. So what I do is I try to get new containers for certain areas and put the holes anywhere from one to two inches on the side of the tote or flower pot or bucket or even raised bed and make it above the ground because that's one thing tree roots cannot do. They can't come up a fresh tree root that is looking for water. They're feeder roots. They cannot come out of the ground and go up. Now, you're going to say, oh, no, that's not true. I've seen them up. They're on the surface. They are on the surface because there were leaves there, something there at one point that they came up, and then the tree roots dried, and they have a protective cover, and then the roots went on to wherever they were going. If your totes let's say you have holes that are one inch above, and I love having the holes where I can see the holes so I can keep track. Because let me tell you, I've done it on the wall where I put the holes behind because I didn't want to see it. I thought it'd be neater. And then I don't know that dirt and leaves and things pile up back there and the holes get end up under you know soil. They get covered. They're still draining. Well, the roots can now get in there and I don't see them. So if I've got them in an area where I can see the holes, the drain holes, then I know if there's leaves or matter that piled up and the roots came. So that's what causes the roots to get into your containers because the soil built up. They cannot go up. A fresh root, feeder root cannot go up and go into a container and suddenly start sucking out the water like a straw. It doesn't work that way. But if you have a windstorm and a whole bunch of leaves pile up where your drain holes are, you don't notice it, it sits for a week or two, the roots come along and go, ooh, this is new matter breaking down. Because remember, the leaves are breaking down. They'll just go through that because it's damp, and then they'll find the drain ho holes. They are really smart plants, believe you me. That's why they've been around a lot longer than us. So you keep an eye on your drain holes, and you'll be fine. So that's the way I grow, and it's, it has worked. It's cheaper, and I'm going to say, in my opinion only, it's better. But again, that doesn't mean I'm not buying any soil. I buy soil to start seeds in. I have all different ways in which I start my seeds. A lot of you have asked me, oh, paper cups. I love paper cups. There are certain plants that you can grow, and as soon as you transplant them, they go into transplant shock, and then they end up dying, or you lose a lot of them because they're delicate. So if you start those in paper cups, when you go to plant them, you leave them in the paper cups 
And what you do is you bust the bottom out totally, plant it wherever you want, and as the plant grows, the paper cup will start to fall apart. But in the meantime, when you water it, the water is going directly to the seedling that you planted outside, the young plant, until it takes off and establishes itself in a perfect area. Perfect world. It works. The other way I do it is in tool. Too hard to explain. You'll have to go back and see the video where I actually take a container with no holes. Yes, no holes put my tool in there and my soil, and I have a method, a mad method, in which I plant my seeds in. Now, why do I do it that way? First of all, I can take that container and sit it anywhere in the house. I can sit it on the windowsill, I can sit it on a table, I can sit it on the grand piano. I don't have one, but if I did, and no water is going to leak out because there's no holes in the containers. So in other words, I can put them anywhere I want. I don't have to find a designated area or a tray or anything to grow. And I'm telling you, it works perfect. The other reason I like growing in the tool in this fashion is I can buy a package of seeds. And sometimes some seeds are not cheap. And I can take those seeds and I can plant five. I may get 100 seeds in there, but I can plant five. And you know what I found? I get close to 100% growing if they're nice, fresh seeds. And I don't have to worry about later on running out of seeds, sprinkling them out, taking the ones, you know, sprinkling them in the container and taking out the ones they want. I literally grow five and six seeds. I've got zinnias growing right now on my deck. And literally, I've got three plants out there because I planted just a few seeds in tool and then I moved them. It's the easiest thing to move. But you'll have to go back and see the video on that. I think the main thing right now is thinking about gardening. I would love to see everybody garden. I don't care if you're in a one bedroom apartment, you can garden even on a windowsill, be it something like greens, parsley, root some rosemary, you can make rosemary tea, mint. You can garden anywhere. I'd like to see you collect your kitchen scraps and make your own soil. And if you can't, give it to somebody else. Maybe work with somebody else. Maybe you're friends got a yard say hey I'll collect kitchen scraps and I'll come over it's a nice place to go over there to somebody else's yard if you don't have one and sit down have a cup of tea and garden a little bit get them gardening the point is you want to grow something one leaf you eat that you grow has got enzymes in it it's got nutrients in it one leaf and sometimes you can grow go to the store and buy 10 leaves of something and the 10 leaves may have nothing if they've been irradiated. I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of it. So you could buy, eat those 10 leaves that you absolutely love, whatever you bought, but add in one or two leaves of something you grew and now you've got enzymes. You can mix it up, mix it up. We need health. Health is something we really can't buy. Yes, it's good to have a doctor and everything, but the point is, you have to take care of your own health. You have to think about it. So definitely, definitely, I would start thinking about growing something, anything. Get something alive in you. If you can, every day would be great. If you can't do it every day, do it a few times a week. But something you grew. Now, I'm fortunate enough to be in Southern California and the weather changes all the time where I can grow all year. I didn't have to do any gardening this year. When I say that, I should say winter, if late fall into winter, because everything I grew, you know, the good stuff, the stuff that could take the weather, continued to grow, as you could probably see on all my garden tours. And then the stuff that wasn't supposed to grow, like some of the squash, some of that died back. That's okay. All that is my soil that's going to come this spring. I'm going to have to knock myself out. I can take a little break. I can talk to you. I can sit back and enjoy nature and grab my camera and sit out there and photograph birds, which I absolutely love. I can think about what I'm going to do. Like I told you, my mind is growing wild. I, it literally, when I sit still, I can't stop thinking about things I can do. I have thought of new things I'm going to do with containers that are going to blow your mind. No joke. This spring, just new things. There's things I did last year that I never got around to putting up on video. So the main thing right now that you want to do, if you're going to garden, is seriously start collecting your own kitchen scraps. Collect leaves, branches, it doesn't matter. Anything 
eucalyptus, it doesn't matter. You can compost orange peels and lemon peels. I would not compost five gallons of orange peels or lemon peels in one container, but spread it around. That dries up too. You can use that. If you're a orange juice factory almost, you know, you're using that much, okay, then keep that separate and let it break down on its own and put it in later. You don't want to overdo. Everything in moderation. That's why you want to mix things up. Mix things up. Change things around. As you layer your containers, even in the ground, you know, you can do the same thing I do, the way I compost in place and totes. You can do that in the ground. I've done it. Got a video on that right in the ground. Dug a hole, layered in the ground, threw all my kitchen scraps, covered it. I planted a collard, a little tiny plant. And within months, that thing was over six feet tall. Massive plant. So you can do everything I do in the ground if you have no gophers or root problems or rodent problems. And what you have rodent problems, you can wrap your the trunks of your plants and tool and they will grow up. That has helped a lot. So you can sometimes work with the rodents. So if you can plant in the ground, go ahead and do the same thing in the ground. Gary plants in the ground. Now, Gary's also growing in totes too now. He swore he wouldn't, but the thing is, I don't know if it's a watch me, he started thinking. You have full control when you grow in a container. You have control of how much you want to plant and what you want to plant. You grow in a great big raised bed that costs you hundreds of dollars and you don't have control because you have to fill the whole raised bed up before you do anything. If you're using 18 gallon totes, and you can go bigger, of course, they have 30 gallons, which are wonderful, I'm growing in those too. You must set up the entire container to grow. That's why I like smaller containers. You have control of water, you have control of compost, you have control of composting, you have control of planting. And if you're buying potting soil, you have control of that too, because bags of potting soil are expensive. I had somebody tell me once they were setting up these raised beds, they bought six of them. And they were so skimpy when I went over there. I said, you, you need to add about three or three to eight inches more soil, I laughed. And he said to me, do you know how much these bags cost? These are gonna cost me a fortune to set these six raised beds up. Well, that's why I like toads. Set them up like a raised bed. Set them up in a line. Watch and see what I do this spring with them. You have control of the money you're putting out. You have control of how much you're spending. And you have control of what you're going to grow. And that's what makes container gardening so wonderful. The most important thing is to do the gardening in the manner in which it works best for you. Because if you do not do it that way, you won't do it. It's got to be easy and it's got to be good or you won't do it. If your plants are dying, you're going to give up. Now keep in mind, plants do die and they are your soil. So you look at those and you think, wow, I'm going to make soil out of it. That's what you want to do. Keep that in mind. Dead plants are your soil. It's a good thing. No biggie. But the point is, if you make it difficult, without a doubt, you won't do it. You want to make your life easy. You want to be able to step away. With my water holes on my containers up higher, I don't have to water every day. The water retains on the bottom because there's, it won't drain off the bottom and the plants will send their roots down and get the water. So I hope I've given you some ideas and thoughts. Like I said, this is just me sitting in the garden, enjoying nature and kind of giving you a little bump because spring is coming and I want you to start growing and I want you to be ahead of the game by saving your kitchen scraps, saving your leaves, collecting it and whatever you can and collect as much as you possibly can for yourself and be ready. Because if you're ready, that is fantastic. And if you're not, it doesn't matter. You can start with bags of soil and start making your own soil as you start to grow. And that is why nature is so wonderful. So I hope I've given you some thoughts. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. i got to do this upside down. The problem is I'm not mic'd. And the wind is blowing uphill at me. So let's do it upside down and flip it and do it that way. And I shouldn't get any wind anymore because I did a live one the other day and I had no idea that even the smallest amount of wind 
it was creating some sound problems. So let's see if it makes a difference. Now I'm upside down. So the wind is coming uphill, but the mic is facing in the direction in which the wind is blowing, not the other direction, not, you know, where the wind is coming up and hitting it, but it's on the other side of the camera. Now, how did I figure that out? Because when I moved the camera a couple times, when I did a live feed, I noticed when I was talking to Gary, the wind cut out. And then when I went back and showed the bird garden, well, going back and seeing it after it was uploaded onto YouTube, I saw the wind came back. So I realized that's because the mics on my iPhone are on the bottom. And the way I was holding the camera, the wind was coming up and hitting the mics. Now the mic is on the other side, so it's just swishing by, but it's not actually hitting the mic. So this should sound much better. And all I have to do is flip it around in editing if I need to.